Ah, 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 ah. Don't be scared. Don't run away from me. All right. Put these away. I'll put these away. All right. Don't be scared. Happy holidays, everyone. And I apologize greatly for the lack of keyboard content for the last couple weeks, if not last couple months. Uh, only thing I could really do with my lack of time was just to play a few games during my little breaks and make a small guide or whatnot, and that's about it. Uh, but hey, now it is now the holidays, and I hope that everyone is having a nice and comfy holiday. Unfortunately for me, though, uh, because I slept after the Christmas Eve hot pot, uh, it's a little late, so I'm gonna just be recording and shooting my shit. So if you want, it's just gonna be me and sitting me behind a camera and the typing test. So if you want, you know, put me in the background, whatever you want, just get comfy because I'm gonna be talking for about five, 10 minutes. But anyway, going on to the topic of the video, you can see from the title, clicky switches, what happened? Nothing really, in my opinion. I just personally think that mechanical keyboards have deviated away from what they once were associated with. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is kind of not only because of the fact that I was just thinking about it recently, but also because I keep coming across comments and edits like this and this. Like, why are you ashamed of the fact that you went through a clicky phase? Or why are you completely desperaging the entirety of the clicky existence? And to me, I just think it's really foolish because in the words of JYMV, which I hope you upload soon, Keyboards and mechanical keyboards in general are exceptionally subjective. It's a very, very, very subjective hobby. And every little thing in terms of customization can appeal or not appeal to anyone that perhaps are, you know, preferring something else. Well, I like clicky switches. Oh, wow. Well, that's cool, but I really like JWK Linears. Or I really like Holy Pandas, but I really love the way this keyboard sounds. Oh, I really don't like the way that keyboard sounds. I really like the look of something else. Every single little aspect from the mounting system to the keycaps to the key switches to the plate material to anything about a keyboard is different. And well, it does appeal to different people. That's why the hobby has exploded because people realized, oh wow, I can customize my keyboard like I customize my entire fucking room or my PC or whatever the hell that requires a lot of customization or perhaps nothing at all. But if you really think back, let's rewind back four or five years Maybe even six, because we've seen a lot of keyboard OG content, you know, keyboard creators and such like that. In my opinion, okay, keep in mind this is my opinion and just my take on the whole thing. I personally think that we have disassociated mechanical keyboards from what they once were. Now, like I said again, if you think back to about six or seven years ago, what did you associate with the term mechanical keyboard? And do you believe it was as mainstream of a term that it was now? And the first can be whatever answer you choose, but I personally think that, of course, the term mechanical keyboard wasn't as well known, if not as well defined as it was, was well, today. And uh, what makes a mechanical keyboard mechanical can be, you know, a, took a, taken from many different terminologies and such, but I personally agree with Kiros122. Uh, his video a while back, I still think it's the right definition, but of course, you know, your definition of technologies may vary. So I personally think that mechanical keyboards are the keyboards that are able to actuate without full bottom out. So that's why you have something like heavy linears where you don't need a bottom out and you can still get a keystroke in. But going back on topic, the reason why I believe that mechanical keyboards have disassociated themselves what they once were is because if you think about it, back in the day, most people associated mechanical keyboards with something that maybe a person that has a lot of money could have and also perhaps is only bought from a massive name brand. So like Razer, Corsair, Logitech with whatever new switch innovations are coming out with. Up until 2016, 2017, maybe even 2018, most people haven't heard any term outside of say blue, brown, or red switches with the occasional black switches perhaps. And then of course, Cherry MX creating the silent switches. But regardless, Mechanical keyboards weren't necessarily as mainstream as they were now, and most likely people had mechanical keyboards, but because of the whole massive tech revolution and offices becoming the complete rice fields of rubber domes and such that cost about $5, $10 a piece, most people kind of forgot where they came from. Because mechanical keyboards have been all around for a long time. It's just people probably didn't realize that they had something that was worth collecting like 40 years down the line. But now when you think about it, you know, 
Mechanical keyboards as a term, it's like, oh, those things that uh, can be both budget and expensive. You can have something that costs 50 bucks and be just fine, or you can have something like this thing where it costs $600. Regardless, it's a very subjective hobby, but people seem to forget that I think, I personally think that mechanical keyboards were once associated with loud, proud, RGB, gamer flair sort of thing. So if you think about it, you know, if you go back to old reviews that cover like mechanical keyboards, like even like if you anyone remembers the old channel MS Tech, uh, he used to cover a lot of tech and such, and he also covered a bunch of keyboards. And it would be a massive selling point that people would be like, oh, wow, this keyboard is only $40 or, oh, my God, this keyboard is loud, proud and has a bunch of mechanical blue switches in it. It sounds great. It sounds loud. It sounds awesome. And it also has LEDs in it. Oh, my God, that's so cool. And of course, as time went on, mechanical keyboards became more of a defined or sort of a realized hobby when you realize stuff like you know Teha types and even like even I think Tay keyboards was doing some custom stuff back in the day and people were like oh wow we can actually customize this thing and then you have the massive flood of the cream switch tfue board I'm pretty sure that set off a lot of the mainstream stuff oh my god the cream switches are out of stock everywhere but Regardless, people kind of forgot where they came from, really, because back in the day, you didn't really consider the fact that you would be spending so much money on something because you were okay with your office keyboard that, you know, was a hand-me-down from your parents or something, or you were completely fine with, say, the office board that you stole and you brought back home because you weren't really necessarily exposed to something like that. And now, because you see all these budget options or even expensive options you want to invest your time into this hobby and of course your money and now people sort of like disparage anything clicky because it isn't normal anymore what you usually hear nowadays what's the fog and the creaminess of the switch it's now associated with linears and tactiles and custom boards or even like budget boards that just deviate away from clicky switches and of course you have people that just completely hate on cookie switches. I'm, you know, that's fine. Like, that's if you don't like clicky switches, that's fine. But don't go around labeling it as something that's like the worst in the market. I'm still waiting for a zeal to release this like freaking weird sort of pin thing that involves clicky switches. I don't like zeal, but I can totally love the I love the concept of that switch design. And I don't know if he even released it or if it's scrapped or whatnot. But regardless, I think that people who like give shit to people who like clicky switches are fucking stupid. Cause here's the thing, cause here's the thing. If you're going to be going around calling people fucking stupid about the choice of switch that they have in their keyboard, what's stopping the other person from saying the exact same to you? And there's no need to be like warish about it. It's kind of like the whole pointless PC, PS3, Xbox wars discussions. Like just let people like what they like, man. Like goddamn. And just because your experience with clicky switches sound like this or like this it doesn't mean that they can't be better as a matter of fact i'm gonna end the video right here because now i want you to listen to something that i have spent a lot of time making uh it is actually two things one is a hansung tfg art that i actually hybridized uh, because I took the low profile Altamu snap spring switches out of a really budget board and I put them inside this one And I also have one that's made out of box pinks and I did a whole like tape mod thing with it And I think they sound really good. This is just a video that's up for open discussion And if you want, you know, talk about it with me in the comments or something like that Because I really would like to hear people's perspective on this And of course I will be ignoring any single fucking comment that goes around and be like Oh cookies, which is bad because you don't know what you're fucking talking about but regardless I hope you enjoy the clicky tests and uh, yeah, I hope everyone has a nice holiday. I have a lot of projects coming up. I have uh, the AR87 with the Starfish Linears coming up and well, I'm going to be doing a retest of this thing because I did remod it. As a matter of fact, here's a spacebar test. Sounds good, doesn't it? Alright, on to the tests. <laughs>